Hey everyone, it's Wildman. So in today's video, I wanted to take another dive into a collection of analog horror tapes that I find very creepy. Oh my god. One video in particular that really freaked me out is about a door within a home. The video warning you not to look for the door, but of course the person in the video looks for it, and what happens after they find it is very disturbing. My camera's about to die, let's see if we can film this in under 20 minutes. But yeah, before we get into it, please do not forget to subscribe as well as liking the video and commenting brah, as you know that helps us get boosted into the algorithm for some reason. But yeah, let's get into this thing. Also, you look very pretty today, thought I'd mention that. The first piece of analog horror I wanted to show you guys is a video called Christ the Redeemer. The video begins and we're shown this tape that is supposed to be intended for Bible study. Immediately after this, we are shown today's passage, which is from Corinthians 6-9. So I'm not going to be reading this entire passage as it's pretty long, uh, but I will read a segment and then summarize the rest of it. The passage reads, Do you not know what the unrighteous will not inherit from the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither formications, nor idolizers, nor adulterers, nor drunkards, nor thieves. And this is a passage from the New International Version of the Bible, specifically the New Testament of the Christian Bible. I know that's like a mouthful. But essentially it's saying that people who do the following will not be let inside of the kingdom of God. But ending this off by saying, but you were washed, but you were sacrificed, but you were justified in the same of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. This whole thing essentially meaning that to be a follower of Christ is to be imperfect. So already establishing this very heavy Christian theme, the video continues. And what we see next is an empty room with a radiator under this blocked off window. It has been days. I can still see him in the sky. Because upon looking out into the night sky, we can see a figure floating. A figure resembling that of Christ. The tape then cuts out, and we're shown this distorted piece of footage recorded on April 28th, 1984. Now the rest of this tape is just distorted footage and nothing really else. The only thing that I can note is what looks like a face in the top right corner of the screen. But besides that, it's kind of just this staticky frame for the rest of the video and nothing else happens. <laughs> This next one is called Trash Bag, a video that came out about a month ago, so not too long ago. The tape starts off with an old recording of a cartoon featuring Coco the Clown. So I know I recognize this character from somewhere, but I wasn't too sure from where. But Coco the Clown was this animated character first appearing as the main protagonist in Out of the Inkwell, a major animated series of the silent era. Jackson Log number three. We got a call from the blank Museum of Historical Arts. Someone had broken into the museum late last night and had somehow stolen one of the Iron Maidens on display. I hadn't even taken a sip of my coffee yet and we already got a call about a missing torture machine. It's been a real strange couple of days. When we arrived on scene, we noticed several windows were broken at the front entrance, but there are no shards of glass on the floor or windsill. Strange. When we checked the display that was holding the Iron Maiden, the display case was still locked. Plus, it wasn't broken in any way. The Iron Maiden seemingly disappeared. When we checked the CCTV footage, all of the cameras were rebooting from 11.45 to 12.14 a.m., all except for one camera that was facing the alleyway next to the museum. The camera showed the thief carrying a trash bag to the end of the alleyway, then hiding it behind a dumpster. After detailing everything that happened during the robbery of the museum, the tape cuts out and plays a VHS recording of an episode of the children's Bible show. I'm so happy life's a breeze, picking fruit from off the tree. 
Within it, Eve is coming back from collecting fruit when she is approached by a serpent. And for those of you familiar with this specific Bible story, this serpent is the devil in disguise, trying to deceive Eve into partaking in the forbidden fruit. Fruit that God specifically told Adam and Eve not to partake in under any circumstance. And after being deceived by this serpent into eating the forbidden fruit, Adam and Eve are then banished from the Garden of Eden. You startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I may when we investigated the alleyway, we found a note under the camera that was facing the alley. I hope you enjoy the present I left for you behind the dumpster. Signed, but it never tells us who signs it and instead shows us the serpent from earlier. Why I may Giving us the impression that this note was signed by the devil. Serpents. Jackson then goes on to make one final entry, and it is in regards to the contents of the bag they found at the scene, the so-called present that the devil left behind. I quickly found the bag and tore it open, without any hesitation. I ended up cutting my hand on a sharp piece sticking out of the bag, its glass. The bag was full of the glass from the broken windows, and right on top of the pile of glass was a photo with writing on it. This was the photo. And the photo that's shown to us is a picture of a child with his face covered in blood. He has a hostage. My partner Carter snatched the photo out of my hand. His face turned pale. The boy in the photo is Caden Dust, the son of my partner, Carter Dust. We will get your son back, I assure you. Alright, so now diving into this next one, it's called Becoming Conscious. In this next one, it covers what it's like to finally become conscious and what to do after that happens to you. Welcome to your first day being conscious. Consciousness arrives at different times for all humans, so do not be worried if you have become conscious earlier than others. The video goes on to detail that there are certain steps to follow in order to live a good life. Since you're no longer on autopilot mode, you're gonna need to learn how to live a conscious life. The first step is self-care. Practice self-care. You will now be able to identify unclean hair, skin, etc. Step two is fairly simple enough. It's just saying that you need to live in a livable home. Basically saying that if your home is dirty, you need to clean it and when something is broken, you need to fix it. Step three is to get a job. Keeping your mind busy is essential for being conscious. However, step four begins to get very off-putting. Step four telling you to remove yourself from life. Real jobs include, but are not limited to, retail, architecture, and accounting. Step four, kill. Avoid overthinking. And the tape begins to guide you on the specific side effects that being conscious can have on you, narrowing it down to one specific side effect, existential dread. Thinking can lead to adverse health effects such as paranoia, depression, and believing that... The video continues and then shows us this distorted footage of children riding a swing set. Existential dread, existent and right as it says that, this face appears on screen. Staring at the viewer, you are conscious. The tape then reverts back to normal and leaves us with one final message. That even though life can be incredibly stressful, there will always be one thing to look forward to. But do not worry. Though you may be in debt for the rest of your life, you can look forward to death. So this one wasn't too creepy, although I do like the concept because gaining consciousness is just crazy. When did you guys become conscious? Because I don't think I became conscious until like middle school, uh, specifically self-conscious. So yeah. <laughs> What is that? What the fuck? Alright, so this next one is called Floaters. And as the video begins, we are shown two people trying to find out 
what is in the sky. Whoa, whoa. Dude, what is that? What the fuck? I think that's a person. Dude, there's three of them. Dude, what the f going on, man? And eventually they see a whole swarm of whatever that is coming their way. The tape then cuts into an informational video on this phenomenon. If a person nearby experiences dizziness or a sensation of weightlessness, you should immediately retreat as far away from the person as possible. And within the tape, it details how authorities have no clue as to why people are just randomly starting to float, although they do know that it does affect larger groups of people easier. Larger populations seem to trigger the floating more than smaller gatherings, implying the phenomenon can be transmitted like an infection. Then detailing how the virus is only affecting humans, no other creature is suffering from this very strange phenomenon. But what is also very odd is that the heights of the people floating vary drastically. Some people floating as high as 200 feet, while some are only floating a few feet off the ground. And perhaps the creepiest part of this entire segment is that it says that people who have begun floating appear to be unconscious. They appear to be in a comatose state. Although, on a few occasions, floaters have been documented muttering incoherent words. The video ending by saying that there is nothing that can be done at this time. The only option, as of now, is to avoid floaters at all costs. Now this one isn't particularly super disturbing or creeping either, but it is kind of unsettling. Thousands of people have just randomly started floating into the sky with no answers as to why. I also do appreciate the voice acting in this one, as opposed to just like a robot reading these lines. I did like this one though. The last one I wanted to show you guys is a video called Doors, and this one is actually very disturbing, which is why I saved it for last. The video starts and immediately tells you to turn off your lights and put your headphones on. So I'll just wait for a second. I actually have a watch. Sometimes I do this and I don't have a watch. All right, you, you do both of those things. All right, let's go. The tape begins and we're shown a single door at the end of the corridor and then stairs leading to the basement. We've added a door. Do not try and find the door. If you search for too long, your house may begin to look unfamiliar. It is easy to become lost. And right after this, we're shown someone standing at the staircases from earlier. Jonathan went looking for the door. Jonathan did not find the door. Jonathan, still standing at the staircase, appearing to be in some sort of trance. The tape then switches to a person named Audrey, who is under the impression that they found the door, even though they were warned not to look for it. Audrey tries the handle, but banging can be heard from the other side. And we are shown what happens when you do find the door. <laughs> do not try and find the door. It will find you. It is here. And we're finally shown what happens to you when you actually do find the door. And perhaps the scariest thing about this entire video plays before us, because Audrey makes her way inside of this room, staring at the viewer. Her face has changed, and now appears to be under the control of someone or something else. Audrey slowly making her way to the screen, and then the tape cuts out.
And yeah, that pretty much does it for this one. If you guys have any videos you want me to cover, you can DM me on Instagram or send them to me on Twitter. But yeah, please do not forget to subscribe as well as liking the video and commenting bruh as that helps out the channel a lot. Also check out the Patreon if you do feel so inclined. Uh, you get early access to videos and your name at the end of every single video. But yeah, that's pretty much everything. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. It's always super great. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Love ya.